Hey guys, Crystal A, CPA and QuickBooks Certified Pro Advisor here with Life Accounting, where we help you to save on taxes and build your wealth. And in today's video, I wanna help you do just that by going over the basics of QuickBooks for small businesses. Now, most of us have at least heard of QuickBooks and know that it is a commonly used software used for bookkeeping. So also in today's training, I'll be going over the basics of bookkeeping so you can better understand how QuickBooks works and how to properly use the platform. Specifically, we're going to go over what is bookkeeping, why it is important and how it works, the basics of QuickBooks, including how to set up your chart of accounts, how to connect your bank account, classifying transactions, reconciling accounts, and running reports. So if all of that sounds good to you, then please go ahead and like this video and don't forget to subscribe. Let's go ahead and dive in. So what is bookkeeping? Bookkeeping is simply the process of keeping track of the financial transactions in your business. That's it. It includes keeping track of things like your sales, invoices, expenses, bills, inventory, loans, payroll, and much, much more. As a business owner, you wanna make sure that you're keeping track of all of the financial transactions in your business so you can easily manage your financial resources or in other words, create a business budget. And you wanna do this because creating a business budget creates a financial roadmap for your business so there aren't any surprises regarding how much money you have. Prepare your taxes. Most businesses have to file a tax return every single year. And the only way for your tax return to be accurate is by having your bookkeeping in order. And lastly, make better business decisions. You'll see by the end of this training that the product of your bookkeeping is a financial statement. Savvy business owners regularly review their financial statements to make important decisions regarding their business. It helps you answer questions like, can I afford this? What are the financial impacts of that? Would this or that add value to my business? These are just a few questions you might ask yourself as a business owner. Ultimately, the answers to these types of questions and more are found in your bookkeeping and will help you make good business decisions. So you understand what bookkeeping is and why it is important, but how does it work? Answering this question will be the perfect segue into the QuickBooks training part of this video. Think of bookkeeping as a cycle. It first starts with a business transaction. Whether you are receiving or spending money, it doesn't quite matter because all financial transactions impact your bookkeeping. Now, as a result of this business transaction, there should be some type of source documentation. This could be in the form of a receipt, invoice, or note payable, etc. Source documentation is used to record transactions in QuickBooks. But if you're like most business owners, you might find it difficult to keep up with every little receipt. So having your monthly bank statement is a great alternative. The next part of the bookkeeping cycle is classifying your transactions into one of five categories. The first being revenue, second expenses, assets, liabilities, and equity. Revenue is what you earn, like your sales. Expenses are what you pay out, like advertising or payroll. Assets are what you own, like your inventory. Liabilities are what you owe, like loans or credit cards. And equity is what you have invested in your business, like contributions you make to your business. This part of the bookkeeping cycle is especially important because how you classify your financial transactions will determine how your financial statements are presented and interpreted by you. This is the bookkeeping cycle in a nutshell. First, a transaction, second, source documents, and third, classifying transactions. Now that you have a basic understanding of bookkeeping and how it works, let's transition your newfound knowledge into QuickBooks. So hopefully you have a QuickBooks subscription to get started with here. Just as a quick overview, QuickBooks offers different subscription levels, which each have their own distinct features. QuickBooks would like to tell you that the plus version is most popular, but most of the small businesses that I've worked with have started with essentials. Once you have a QuickBooks subscription, the next thing you wanna do is set up your chart of accounts. Your chart of accounts 
accounts is a complete listing of your company's accounts and their balances. They are accounts or categories that you will place your transactions in. Here is what a completed chart of accounts looks like. As you can see, each account has a name, type, detail type, and balance, all of which would need to be entered when setting up each account. And here's how you set up an account in your chart of accounts. Let's say you wanna set up an account for office rent so you can start keeping track of your office lease payments. On the chart of accounts screen, you would click on the green button, new. Select your account type, which for office rent would be expenses. When you choose expenses, a set of detail types are generated and you would select the type that best describes the account you are creating. So in our case, office rent would best fall under the rent or lease of buildings. And you can even see a little description of the detail type to help you choose. After that, you would name the account office rent. And this is the name that would appear on your chart of accounts and financial statements. Then hit save and close. Once you're back on the chart of accounts main page, you'll see this new account saved. Now there are a few things to note here. One, it is critically important that you select the correct account type for each account. Assets should be assets, revenue should be revenue, and so on. When you improperly set up an expense as an asset, for example, that account will show up on the wrong financial statement and incorrectly present your company's financials. And that is a disaster. Make sure to read the description for each account so you can avoid making this mistake. Two, you may find that you want to show subcategories for some of your account types. For example, you may want to show the different types of advertising your company is doing, like Facebook ads and print ads. To do this, you would follow the same steps as before, except before hitting save and close, you would check the box for subaccount and choose the main account you want the subaccount to fall under. Then you would hit save and close and the subaccount should be directly under the main account on the chart of accounts screen. Three, make sure to create an account for nearly all of the transactions you plan to have in your business. You don't wanna get in the habit of categorizing transactions under other or miscellaneous. This could cause you to miss out on some very valuable deductions come tax time. You also wanna be able to understand and properly manage your company's financial financials. And if too many transactions are under miscellaneous, that could be confusing to you. QuickBooks does start you off with a basic account list for the chart of accounts, but it's important for you to customize this list for your business and what is important for you. Once you have your chart of accounts set up, next you'll want to connect your business bank account. If you don't have a separate bank account for just your business, make sure to open one and run all of your business transactions through that account and never use it for personal transactions. This will make bookkeeping for your business so much easier, especially when using QuickBooks because your bank transactions will automatically show up in QuickBooks. Furthermore, if you operate an LLC, S Corp or C Corp, it is legally required for you to have a separate business bank account. If not, you can find yourself in a whole lot of trouble. So go ahead and get a free EIN number from the IRS website, which is required to open most business bank accounts and establish at least one business checking account. Now to connect your business bank account in QuickBooks, navigate to the banking screen and select link account. From here, choose the appropriate banking institution you have your business account set up with and log in with your online banking credentials. Follow the prompts to connect your account. One of the last things it'll ask you is from what date do you want to import transactions? You would choose the date you want to start your bookkeeping from. As a good rule of thumb, it is wise to start from the beginning of the tax year or January 1st. This will import all of your bank transactions from the selected date. Now, when you go back to the banking screen, you should see your imported bank account listed at the top and the list of transactions underneath it. Now that you have your bank account and transactions connected to QuickBooks, the next thing you need to do is to classify your transactions. Do you remember the chart of accounts you set up in the beginning? 
Well, it comes to play right here. On the banking screen for each transaction, you'll want to select the appropriate vendor or customer name. If the vendor or customer name is not there, just type it in and create a new vendor or new customer. Next, and this is the most important part, choose the correct category. The categories listed is simply a reflection of your chart of accounts. If the transaction was for office rent, select office rent. Or if it was for sales, select sales. Then hit add. Repeat this process for each transaction in each bank account. If you're unsure how to classify a transaction and need to come back to it later, you can always categorize it under an AX account until you know how to correctly classify it. Once you add a transaction, it gets included in your books and will show up on your company's financial statements. But before you generate your financial statements, you want to make sure that all of the bank transactions in your books are properly recorded and accounted for. This process is called reconciliation and is the next step in bookkeeping for your business using QuickBooks. Reconciling your transactions is the practice of determining any differences between the balance shown on your bank statement and in your bookkeeping system. You wanna make sure that none of your transactions are missing or double counted in your QuickBooks. Performing a bank reconciliation at least monthly will help you catch errors or even billing mistakes made by your vendors. To do this in QuickBooks, you would start on the banking screen and go to Bank Register. This screen shows all of the transactions that have been added to a particular bank account. From here, click on Reconcile. On the next screen, you want to make sure that you have the right bank account selected and enter in your ending balance and ending date according to your bank statement. So in order to do the reconciliation process, make sure to have your monthly bank statement handy. You'll need it. Once you enter the ending balance and ending date, start reconciling. On the next screen, you'll check off each transaction in QuickBooks that you see on the bank statement. This is the perfect time to catch any bookkeeping errors and also make sure your transactions are classified correctly. This process double checks that everything that is in QuickBooks actually occurred and is also on the bank statement. By the time you go through the transactions, your difference should be zero. If it is not, then there is an error with your beginning balance, ending balance, or you mistakenly checked a transaction that was not on the bank statement or there is a missing transaction in QuickBooks. Keep in mind that any transactions that were not matched to a bank statement transaction should likely be removed from your books to avoid misrepresentation of your numbers. And any missing transactions should be added in. If you want to learn more about troubleshooting your bank reconciliations, please let me know in the comments. But once your difference is zero, you can hit finish now. After you go through this process, you should feel comfortable that your books as of the ending date are complete and accurate. The last step in this QuickBooks training is to run your financial reports, specifically the balance sheet and income statement or profit and loss statement. The balance sheet shows your outstanding balance in assets, liabilities, and equity. The income statement shows your profit or loss for a specific period. Each of these reports should be prepared and reviewed at least monthly. But don't worry, the bulk of the work has already been done once all of your transactions are classified and reconciled. Preparing the reports is usually the easy part. To do this, navigate to the reports menu and click or search for the balance sheet. Select the report period or you can always hit custom and select the dates you want to look at. Choose either cash or accrual as the accounting method. Most small businesses tend to be cash basis, but I'll link a video in the description to help you figure out if you are cash or accrual based. And then hit run report. Here you'll see all of your company's assets, liabilities, and equity as of the ending date of the report. The balance sheet tells you how much your company owns and how much it owes. Now let's look at the income statement. On the report screen, search for profit and loss. Select the report period, or you can always hit custom and select the dates you want to look at. Choose cash or accrual and then hit run report. Here you'll see all of your company's income and expenses within the report period date range. The profit and loss statement tells you how profitable your company is. 
Congratulations, you now have a better understanding of what bookkeeping is and how to set up your bookkeeping in QuickBooks. As an overview, remember bookkeeping is the process of keeping track of your business financial transactions. It helps you manage your business finances, prepare taxes, and make better business decisions. To set up your bookkeeping, you can use QuickBooks. Just make sure you have a separate business bank account established. Next, make sure to customize and set up your chart of accounts, sync your business bank account transactions, classify and reconcile those transactions, and finally run your financial statements, at least monthly. Simple, right? If this sounds a little overwhelming to you, consider hiring an experienced bookkeeper to help you through this process. QuickBooks actually has a community of pro advisors that can assist you with setting up and maintaining your books. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, let me know in the comments and give it a like. Also, let me know if you have any questions down below and I'll see you in another video.